think it is very unlikely that a comprehensive uh, free trade agreement will be negotiated by the end of this year. Um, historical examples show that it takes much longer to negotiate a very comprehensive trade agreement that covers uh, very different areas and uh, in particular different sectors and different arrangements. What is more likely is that a relatively basic bare bones free trade agreement will be negotiated uh, and then there might be further um, phase in arrangements in place that make it easier for firms to adjust for some time. However, it remains a possibility that no agreement uh, might be reached at the end of this year and we will reach another sort of like cliff edge um, deadline towards the end of 2020. Um, that means that uncertainty remains elevated in the UK economy. Um, it uh, is not certain that a free trade agreement will be in place at the end of this year and it is also uncertain what a potential free trade agreement in the long run will look like. So uh, firms will still uh, have to face these types of uncertainties, will have to uh, still um, sort of uh, think about whether additional investments in the UK economy make uh, sense from an economic point of view. The uh, UK might uh, um, prefer um, signing up to a similar rule set with uh, non-EU countries, like for example the US, but that at the same time would then mean that, uh, that uh, European regulation would be different from that and therefore trade would, uh, would face barriers. It would not be possible to uh, lower regulatory barriers between the UK and the EU enough if the UK has already signed up to a different rule set. So that is a big challenge. Um, a question that is sort of like uh, often coming up is uh, what would be the benefit of negotiating free trade agreements uh, with countries outside of the European Union? Um, we here at the National Institute, we estimate that uh, benefits from striking a free trade deal, for example, with the US and other major non-EU trading partners would yield an economic benefit of well, some 0.2-0.3% of UK GDP, so it's a very small effect. And that would have to be compared with the economic loss relative to continued EU membership of the currently proposed uh, trade deal between the UK and the European Union. The deal that is currently on the table that the UK government has proposed would um, be somewhere between the trading relationship that Switzerland has with the European Union and the trading relationship that uh, Canada has just negotiated with the European Union. So uh, a uh, free trade deal that would not cover services um, very much, only to a, a small extent, very likely, because of that uh, um, moving away from the EU's uh, rule set um, issue. Um, there will be agreements when it comes to tariffs, um, but uh, membership of, for example, the customs union is not uh, on the table either. So it will be a relatively distant relationship. Now, from uh, experience um, and from uh, historical examples in the EU, I think we know that uh, the uh, relationship between the UK and the EU might well look different from currently existing types of uh, trading arrangements. Um, the uh, European Union has sort of like always come up with uh, tailored solutions to, to particular um, problems in its past. But on a spectrum from relatively free trade to friction, to trade with frictions, I think the uh, current proposal has uh, moved uh, quite some, uh, quite a bit towards so like more friction, uh, uh, trade with more frictions. Mm -hmm.